Well, S Sid Khan is a very intriguing character and uh, a, a very inspirational one for nearly everybody who knew him. They all looked up to him and uh, uh, he was a kind of rising star of Beeston. He would have been in local politics now if he was still alive. came from quite a distinguished family. His, uh, his mother uh, and his wife, his, his stepmother had been up to Buckingham Palace and he he he'd see the Queen. He'd been up to the House of Commons. Uh, Tony Benn's son had come over to the um, the Hamara Healthy Living Centre, which he'd helped to open and run. Um, Sid Khan had a group for getting local kids off drugs, a, a sort of healthy living thing. We went to, up mountains and um, canoeing on the rapids, just uh, and it had a, a cold turkey thing for drying out people, heroin addicts. So he was helping kids get off drugs. He was helping. Uh, in the way of conflict resolution. He was proud of his ability to help resolve conflicts non-violently. That's one of the things he put down applying for a school job. When the Times Educational Supplement came to the school he worked at, they interviewed the headmistress and him. They were the two people they, they in interviewed, OK? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so he was looked up to uh, and uh, he, he had uh, remarkable qualities uh, that, that uh, you know, you, you don't find every day. And uh, after his death, all the horror stories start to appear. All the sort of spook-planted intelligence stories from British intelligence, American intelligence and Mossad start coming out saying these dreadful things about him and linking him with alleged terrorist trials from years before. Uh, well, of course the police had a, had a file on him. Of course they followed him because he was quite an eminent character and they would have had uh, some film footage of him uh, as, as, as well. There's nothing surprising about that. So uh, I didn't pick up anything that made him, as most people believe, uh, made him a kind of suspicious character or, or um, having some underworld connections. I'm rather doubtful about all, all of that, actually. Um, may I say that uh, halfway through this, uh, my researches into the book, when the Kingston trial was just getting going, I, I went up to Leeds and I was very privileged to be able to talk with the brother of his widow. So Sina Patel's brother, Ahmed, and uh, we had an evening chatting about things uh, and uh, also the, co the concept of going out for, um, uh, for, for uh, uh, sort of righteous, uh, for, for, um, to, to Pakistan and Kashmir for some sort of military training which uh, the, the locals around there gathered funds for, they collect funds for, or what they call jihad, uh, and uh, they would say this is okay in Muslim ethics that it wasn't anything to do with terror, that it was okay to defend, say, Kashmir, uh, some try to maintain it as a Muslim state. I mean, I'm not personally endorsing this, but uh, they, they would train just like young British people would train to do army training. Uh, and they went out there and did that. And he, would, he explained to me how, uh, has, uh, how Tanweer, I think it was Tanweer and Khan, both went out to Pakistan in 2005 um, uh, and much was made of that an attempt to make out that he was left a video uh, urging his little one-year-old daughter to grow up and be, be ruthless and so on um, but uh, I, I, I would like to get more of the family's view of what these videos are about because uh, I, I don't fully accept the government uh, claim of, of, of what these videos were that Khan left behind. Uh, so uh, uh, he, he did go out for those uh, jihad, uh, uh, jihad uh, training in, in Pakistan at some point. It seems that he did. Uh, other times he went out, it might have been to see the family. Uh, and uh, I think that we, we would very much benefit if we get any background from Pakistani uncles and so on of these four. And what you hear in the news that Pakistani relatives don't believe they were guilty, and uh, and, and uh, if we could get their point of view. See, the terrible thing is, in all, in all these Muslim, what I would say, fake terror trials, you're never really allowed to hear the point of view of the Muslims who get demonised. They they get blamed. They have to take the blame, and we never never really allowed to hear their their point of view. Uh, uh, yes.